QuickBooks Online 2023 Enter Purchase Order or PO Form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, new incognito window, and then typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're going to be using the sample company to take a look at the differences between the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the view that the sample company is in. You can toggle back and forth between the two views by selecting the cog drop down, switch the views down below. Opening up a couple tabs to put reports in by right clicking on the tab up top. We do this every time, duplicating the tab, right clicking on the duplicated tab to duplicate again, back to the tab to the middle to put the balance sheet in that tab by going to the reports on the left hand side, opening up then the big balance sheet. By the way, if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports on the left hand side. I'm then gonna to go to the tab to the right and then open up the reports again to look at the P to the L, the profit, the loss, the income statement. And then I'll close the hand boogie up top. We'll change the range in the middle from 010123 tab, 123 tab, run it to refresh it. There's nothing there. We haven't done anything on the income statement still. And then I'm gonna to go to the tab to the left, close the hand boogie, scrolling up, Change the range, 010123 tab, 12, 12, 31, 2, 3, tab, run it to refresh it. That's the setup process we do every time. In prior presentations, we set up the new company file. We put the beginning balances in place. I'm gonna collapse the assets, the liabilities. We then thought about how we would start the new business. Typically, new business transactions would mean that we need assets typically to get things rolling, to get the ball started. We often have to buy property planting equipment. We finance that possibly by taking out a loan or possibly by putting our own on our own money into the business on the equity side due to the fact that the business has not been up and running long enough to provide its own equity side of the revenue side of things here. And then we, we financed it. We bought some property planting equipment. We put some assets also into our short-term investments to hold on to them till we buy more stuff. And now we're thinking about the next thing, which if we sell inventory would be the purchase of inventory. So we're going to be buying and selling guitars. So clearly if we do that, then we might do that a couple different ways. One, we might have the guitars already in, in our shop. So people can come in, test them out, take a look at them and possibly buy one on the spot. But we also might have a situation where we, we buy custom guitars. People come in and they want some kind of a custom job or something like that, in which case we might buy something as the customers come into place. Now, this being our new shop, we're kind of focusing in on most likely buying our inventory that we can have basically on hand within the shop, which would be a similar process for many types of businesses. So once again, we're buying something that is not gonna be expensed at the point of purchase, even though, uh, even if we paid cash for it, because we're gonna be putting on the books such or similarly as we did with the furniture and equipment as uh, inventory. That's the typical thing with inventory. And then we're gonna expense it in the form of cost of goods sold, 
when we sell the inventory. So we'll get into that in a future presentation. Quick look at the flowchart for inventory here. This is the desktop flowchart, but it's just a flowchart of the general flow of transactions. And I think this one's a, a good one to look at. Inventory is going to span both the purchasing side, the vendor cycle, and the selling side, the customer cycle. So when we purchase the inventory, we're going to have to put it on the books typically as inventory. And then when we sell it, we're going to have to decrease inventory and record it as cost of goods sold. Now, remember, there's a couple different ways we can deal with inventory. The easiest way to deal with inventory would be that we're not even going to going to record it as an asset. We stay in a cash based system. So that would only work if you're buying inventory in a just in time type of system. You buy the inventory, you expense it at the point that you purchase it. But most of the time we have to do an accrual thing, put the inventory on the books as an asset. We could then use either a periodic inventory system, tracking the units of inventory outside of QuickBooks or a perpetual inventory system, tracking the units inside QuickBooks. We're gonna be using a perpetual inventory system. Therefore, we're gonna have to track the inventory in units and dollars every step along the way. So the first thing we do is purchase the inventory which we might do with a bill form, which would increase the accounts payable or a check form or uh, an expense form. However, we could have one step before the purchase of, of the inventory and that's the purchase order. That's what we're thinking about here. Note that not every company will have a purchase order and a purchase order is a little bit abstract because uh, if you think about your own purchases, you don't use something like a purchase order. So individuals, if you bought something online or something like that, then you're gonna pay for it when you purchase it online, even though you haven't received it yet typically, and then they're gonna ship it to you. Uh, the only time you'd use a purchase order, that might be the case sometimes in business, in which case you would just basically write a check and record the inventory or have an expense form when you purchase it. But uh, in some cases, you might be able to order the inventory before paying for the inventory, that's what a purchase order is doing. That would only happen if you have some leverage over the trans over the transaction. Possibly you you have a something that you want to manufacture like overseas in like China, and they're going to manufacture a thousand cups or something like that. Then they might actually be able to set up so they actually do the job, give you the the, the merchandise, and then give you the bill with it. In that case the purchase order is just a request. So the other thing that's a little strange about it is there's no financial transaction with it if it's just a request because we don't have the inventory number one and we didn't pay for anything number two. We just had a request. It's an important form then if you're using the purchase order, if it's part of your process to track, but it's not something that's gonna have an impact on the balance sheet, the income statement, the financial statement. So we're gonna track it internally. That's different than most every other form here, except possibly the estimate form is the main other exception we'll get into later. So that's what we're imagining here. We're gonna request the inventory, but we have not yet received it. There will be no impact therefore on the financial statements until we receive the inventory. Back to the first tab, we're imagining we're buying guitars and this now is a normal transaction. So normal transactions are usually in the little plus button. Plus button, we're in the vendor cycle because eventually we're gonna purchase the inventory and we're gonna go down to the purchase order, the PO on down below. It looks kind of like uh, an expense form or, or kind of like an invoice type of form. And so you would think a financial transaction would happen, but no. We're going to say this is Epiphone. I'm just going to type it in here. This is the vendor that we buy our guitars from. So we're going to buy them and then sell them. It's open right now by default. So obviously it's an open purchase order because uh, we're processing it. We haven't received it. You're going to have to enter the email. If you're going to be emailing the purchase order, the purchase order being a form oftentimes that we will be providing to an outside person outside of our company, not just a data input form. Therefore, it's a customizable form, one you might want to like put your logo on and all that kind of stuff. You got your mailing address, which uh, is here. We've got your ship to. So if you have your ship to options, if you were to ship it to someone other than us, then you can select the customer. So if you're going to ship it directly to the customer, you could select the customer, which will then change 
the shipping, but we're gonna say it's gonna come to us. It's gonna come to our store. The purchase order date, let's say it's on the 12th. I'm gonna say January 12th, let's say minus. Notice I'm hitting plus and minus if I'm close to the date and it'll then change the date. So I'm using the keyboard to do that. Anytime you use the keyboard, you're more of a geek and that's good typically because it saves time when you're doing geeky things like entering data into the system. There's our, our shipping address, which is our default address. And so we'll, we're not gonna put ship via anything here, no tags. Notice that the category field is compressed automatically because I'm not gonna put it to the category of anything. I'm not gonna put it to inventory generically. I'm gonna use the items that we set up before it, or, or add new items as we as we add them, giving us the actual units of guitars that we are requesting as well as the dollar amount for the cost of them. So I'm just gonna add a couple guitars here that we're gonna be requesting. So if I hit the drop down, we already set up all the guitars. That's when we set them up in our products and services. Now we might have sometimes that we add them on the fly or as we go, as they say, but we're gonna add some that we already have. So we're gonna purchase an ELP because this is our main vendor. And we're imagining that we do them, do business with them often. We already have our deals set up between the two of us. And so there's the rate that we set up when we added this to our our products i'm going to say we're buying 20 of these and the rate is 400 the system knows that because i already set up the item if i hadn't set up the item i would then set up the item and put the rate the amount is going to be 8,000. notice i have a customer field and you might say why in the world would i have a customer field over here when i'm buying something from the vendor i'm the one that's buying here the customer is the one that i sell to the reason we have a customer field is because I might be in a situation, and we will do this later, where I purchase specifically for a particular customer. And if that's the case, the vendor doesn't need to know about that customer that I'm purchasing for, but I would like to track the customer so that when I receive the guitars, I know that the next step that I want to do automatically is contact that customer and generate an invoice, which is the sales side of the transaction because I now have their guitar. So if it was a custom guitar, customer came in, says, I want a guitar. And we said, great, we don't have that on hand. I will order it for you custom. Then I might put the customer here so I can track that in, in as we go. All right, then I got an, the other one's gonna be an EPR. That's gonna be our Epiphone Riviera. So we're gonna say that we're gonna buy five of those at a rate of 440 dependent De that's determined by the system. So that comes out to 2,200, no customer. We're gonna say that we also are gonna buy an E, an EP, EPSP that we set up. And so there's that one. Uh, hold on, what happened here? It's an, oh, uh, it wants to set it up. I messed up something. It's gonna be an EP, SP that one that's the one an Epiphone standard pro I kind of made these up so these are our guitars but you know they're <laughs> they, they're just part of the practice problem here so I got five of those we just put some guitars in place and that's 480 so 2400 the, the rate this is the cost by the way not what we're going to sell them for obviously we're going to mark them up and sell them which again is determined by the item already set up in the past we will set up new items as we make more purchase orders and invoices and whatnot in the future okay so that comes out to a total oh i got one more let's do one more line here this is going to be an epsp an epsp wait i already did that so that's going to be an epiphone let's make this one I'm gonna make this one an EPSH, EPSH. And then, so that I bought, and how many, I bought four of those at 320. Okay, let's do that. And then I bought the EPSP Epiphone Standard Pro, five of those at 480, and that comes out to 2,400. So the total here is 13,880. So note that we would think then we're going, okay, there's a total down here. This looks like a financial transaction is happening. I would think there'd be something happening to the balance sheet and the income statement. There is not because this is just, uh, this is just a request. Nothing's actually happened yet, but I can use this purchase order to then populate a bill. Notice I can add lines. I can clear lines. I can put a, a message here if I want to. 
on the purchase order. I can put an internal memo. I can add attachments if I want to down here. I can cancel. I can clear the whole thing. We can print it uh, and we can make it reoccurring. Let's look at the preview right now by going to the print. That gives us a preview. So this is what it would look like when we provide it to the uh, the vendor. There's There's my little test item with the memo. And so there it is. I'm going to close this back out and then we're going to and then you could have more options copy delete and uh, audit audit the history then we have the options of save new if we want to make another one save and send it if we're going to email it I'm going to save and close it for the purpose of the practice problem okay so no impact on the financial statements from that so how do I track it then well, we're, we're, we're facilitating transactions with a vendor now. So we're going to go into the vendor center, what I would call it under the expenses area. And then you've got your options up top. Now note that if you're in the business view, by the way, then it would be under the paid and paid area. And we're looking at the vendors down here. You've got your vendors and you've got your bills on down here. It's a little bit different over here because you've got that added tab of the expenses which is which is a nice tab so let's go up to that one actually first to find that one in in the business view they put that under the bookkeeping so you can go under bookkeeping and then you've got your transactions up top and then your expenses tab to the right so it's a different little bit different location on that one than you might expect uh, on the transactions so we've got if we go into our uh expenses i'm going to close this out it'll give us the filter of transactions up top and we might filter this by the purchase orders so this is one way we can we can look at the open purchase orders i have all status you've got your date ranges and you've got your uh, payees and uh, your categories if applicable on down below i'm going to say apply there's our purchase order now as we accumulate more purchase orders we we could then say whether the purchase order is open or closed obviously it is open so there's the open purchase order if i said the purchase order was closed the purchase order would disappear we don't have any closed purchase orders closed meaning we have received the shipment and uh, and that's going to be the next step in the process so then the next the next step from the purchase order is we're going to basically make a bill with it right typically because we'll get a box of guitars with a bill in it and then we'll enter the bill possibly populating the bill for the information of the purchase order okay let's open this back up again go to the expenses tab and then we're going to go down to the vendors this is another way we can kind of track the information close up the ham bookie up top you got a nice little sort field i can sort my purchase orders that'll give me the vendors which have the open purchase orders there's the purchase order or I can go into just by vendor directly. And if I'm communicating with the vendor, I can go in here and say, okay, yeah, we've got this purchase order that is uh, an open purchase order. I can then hit the drop down, and I can copy it to a bill. So we'll make a bill of it next time. And I can send the purchase order if I need to from this area. So the next step, of course, again, is going to be that we're going to receive a bill. We'll talk more about that in a future presentation. For now, let's make another purchase order. So we'll do it again. Let's run it back. Uh, we're going to go up top, hit the plus button. And I'm going to say this is going to be another purchase order under the vendor tab purchase order. And this time we're going to say Gibson. This is another. I'm not sure. Do we have Gibson? This might be a new vendor we don't have gibson so i'm going to set up a new vendor as we go which often is the case when we enter expenses we set up the vendors who we purchase from this time we're going to do that with the purchase order because we're buying stuff with it so we're going to say gibson usa tab now note that you might want to add more detail if this is a primary uh, person that you're purchasing from such as for example at least the email address uh, in practice if it was a vendor that you're just buying like the utility bill from or something, then all you would really need the name. But the name is the only required field and that's just what we're gonna do for the practice problem. I'm gonna save it. Uh, hold on, it didn't do it. I'm say Gibson USA, that's the required field. So I want that, so I'm gonna say, okay, so now it's good. 
Okay, email. I didn't add the email, but if you're going to send it by email, then of course we would need the email. We've got the ship to if it was going to a customer, but we're going to ship it to ourselves. The date I'm going to put here will be... So I'll keep the date as is up top, and then we're going to go into the items, and I'm going to say that this is going to be a GI USA. So we already have this one down here. So because we set up the products in a prior presentation, so you can take a look at that if you haven't. And then this is, I'm going to put three of them. They're giving us the quantity on hand. Uh, so we're buying more of them. Three, and that's kind of neat that they give us the quantity on hand as we go through. But there it is. We have no customer for it. So we don't, we're not going to add any detail on down below. We saw the options down here, same options. This time, however, instead of saving and closing, I'm going to say save and new. And we'll just add another one here. So we're going to add a new vendor as we go again. So we're going to add a new one, but I just type it in here typically. Diamond head. Uh, I'm just going to call it that. And so I'm just making up the name here and I'm going to, I'm going to copy that over to the, the vendor. So that's going to be our vendor name. So we'll save that. And I'm just going to put that information. I'm not going to put an email address, same stuff. Let's keep the date the same as well and go on down to our items so this one we, we're going to buy the d the duc which is the diamond head uh ukuleles and again i kind of just looked up ukuleles here a while ago <laughs> so there's i'm not i'm not trying to recommend any of these uh instruments here I've, i have not used uh, pretty much any of these instruments i'm just rolling here i've just got my i've just got like a one a couple i've got a couple anyway that's this that's that one so the, we're going to request that one nothing being recorded again let's do the save and new again so this one I'm, it's going to be epiphone again so i'm just going to type in epiphone we already have epiphone so everything looks good we'll keep the date uh the same and then notice it's trying to populate the last uh detail that we had which is usually often a good thing but we want a different we want to populate it differently here so i could clear this one at a time with the trash can so i can populate what i want or i can go to clear all lines down below and just clear that up and then we're going to add the new data so we're going to buy some more uh, elps uh, elp again but this time we're going to buy 50 of them and we're imagining that they we're buying them specific for a customer so we had a customer come in and say we want these specific guitars and we're going to say great we're, we'll talk to our vendor on it and and get you those guitars and so this isn't going to make any change to the actual transaction the vendor epiphone doesn't care about our customers but it's useful for us to track internally so that when we receive the guitars we can turn around and invoice the customer so i'm going to add a new customer as we go so now we're adding a customer not a vendor I could do it this way, but I typically just type in, I'm going to call it Eric Music. I'm just making up a customer music and then tab. So now we've got the customer. I'm just going to put the minimum data to add the customer. So I'm going to save it. And actually they want the minimum data over here to add the customer. So I'll copy and paste it and then save it. Okay. And then I'm going to do also an EPSH, an EPSH. I'm going to say we want 10 of those and note that we could have two different customers with the same purchase order. And then when we receive those guitars, we can turn around and, and, uh, and make invoices with them. But I'm going to have the same customer here. Once again, Eric music for these two items. So there's that one comes out to the 23, 200, no transaction on the financial statements yet. We're just requesting. We expect to get a box of, of guitars with a bill in it at some point. We're going to say save and new again. Now this one, we're going to add a new item as we do the, the purchase order. So I'm, this is going to go from, uh, this is Gibson. No, this is going to be, yeah, Gibson USA that we're purchasing from Gibson USA. And so that populates because we had that in, we'll keep the same date again. And notice it's trying to populate something down below. I don't want that one so I can exit out or trash it out here. <laughs> And or I can go to uh, clear the lines and then I'm going to add a new one that we've never bought from them before or requested. I'm going to call it a GSB. So that's going to be the, the nickname GSB. 
that I'll call it, I'm gonna have to add it. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and add it or I can select tab and it will then populate. These are the selections that we saw when we put the items together. So we're gonna add the item on the fly. We're gonna track the item inventory. So we wanna select the top option for the inventory tracking and here's our detail. So now if we tab through this, we're not gonna say that there's an SKU category. We could categorize it as guitars versus basses versus drums or something like that, but I'm not gonna do that here. The, the initial quantity on hand, they make you put something in here, even though most of the time it's gonna be zero, uh, like when you're just starting and they have to have as of date. So I would always put like the beginning of the period or something like that. Reorder point, I'm just gonna put at zero meaning it's gonna give us a warning when we get down to a low point, but I'm just gonna put it at zero. The inventory asset account, that's what's gonna increase when we purchase it. The description that's gonna be on the purchasing uh, items uh, is gonna be, or on the sales items is gonna be Gibson GS or SG. I'm gonna call it Gibson SG is gonna be the name of these guitars apparently. And then I'm gonna say we we sell them. This is the sales price, not the purchase price, $5.98. When we sell it, which isn't being done in this form, this the, it would be a sales form would be an invoice or sales receipt. This is the purchase order. We will go to the sale of product income, the income statement account. Taxes will be applied. That's the case by default. If I go into here, taxes are being applied. So I'll keep that. And then we're going to say the purchase. This is what's gonna be populating on the purchase forms, which will be included here, the purchase order, although this is not the thing that's actually gonna record the purchase, it's just the request, and then the bill will will record that as well as an expense form if we bought it with that. And then the cost. Okay, I'm actually gonna change this up a little bit. Let's say that, let's say we sell it for 777, and then the cost is gonna be 598. And then the expense account, so 777, cost 598 so this is what's going to populate here the cost on the purchase order for the request cost to get sold is the expense account that will be impacted when we sell it with an invoice or sales receipt the vendor could be gibson usa that's who we purchase these from okay so let's go ahead and save and close that so there we have it we're going to say that we're buying 10 of those we're going to say the rate has been applied now. That's the rate we just set up. We're also gonna add a customer for this one. I'm just gonna make up another customer that we're buying these specifically for. The customer came in and said, hey, I want this kind of guitar. We have never bought those before, but hey, we'll buy them specifically for you from our vendor because we do business with Gibson USA. So we're gonna say music stuff store. I'm just typing in the name of the customer and I'm gonna copy that over to the required field and just keep it at that. And then, so I'm gonna save it. And so there's the amount of 5980. Uh, so I'm gonna record this one. This one is the last one. So I'm gonna say drop down or rise up and uh, save and close. So now let's just check them out again. So if I hit the, hit the carrot over here, then we can go to the expenses tab. And then I could look at my vendors, which would be if you're in the other view, that would be in the in the get paid pay tab and now we're in the vendors so the vendor center i would basically call it then you've got your your vendors and you could check them out by the purchase orders the open purchase orders and you can see here here's the vendors that have the purchase orders you can see you got two purchase orders on these two and so on if i was communicating with the vendors i can go into them here i could see the purchase orders i can send then or I can then create or copy over to a bill. That's what we expect to happen next in the process. I can also go to the expenses tab up top and you can find the expenses tabs a little bit different location over here on the business view. It's under bookkeeping and then transactions and then the expense tab up top. So it's a little bit different location there. And once again, I can sort by filter purchase order and I would generally sort by the open purchase orders and then I can manage my purchase orders this way as well. Okay, so there's no impact on the financial statements yet. And in future presentations, we're gonna to start to hopefully record the bills, assuming the next step in the process of receiving uh, the inventory. That's when the financial transactions will happen, increasing inventory on the balance sheet, increasing 
uh, the accounts payable and also increasing sub ledgers related to the inventory asset account as well as sub ledgers related to the accounts uh, payable accounts. So we'll look forward to that in future presentations.